Let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys and sufferings on this day for all the intentions of your Sacred Heart in union with the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world in reparation for my sins, for the intentions of all my relatives and friends, and in particular for the intentions of the Holy Father. Amen. Let us pray for the intentions of the Holy Father for the month of October. For the Synod, we pray for the Church that she may adopt listening and dialogue as a lifestyle at every level and allow herself to be guided by the Holy Spirit towards the peripheries of the world. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear friends, the Word of God welcomes us this morning. And as we begin this day, let us begin by spending time with the Lord. As we have decided to welcome this day in the presence of the Lord, let us begin by thanking Him for all that He has done for us, all the blessings that He has bestowed on us, and most importantly, for all the graces, for all the favours that He has given us right from our birth till now. On many occasions, we see that because we are caught up with so many other activities, because of our busy schedule, we don't pay attention to these small details that are there in our lives. Very often, these graces, these blessings, which are so important in our lives, are kept aside. And therefore, today, as we begin today's morning prayer, we ask the Lord to give us the grace so that we may be able to appreciate the good things that He has done for us. And therefore, it is appropriate that we begin today's prayer by thanking the Lord for all that He has done for us. First and foremost, we thank the Lord for the gift of life, for giving us talents, abilities and various opportunities in our lives. We also thank the Lord for the gift of our family members, friends, relatives, near and dear ones and all those who play a very important role in our lives. Now we see that there are so many people who have been instrumental in our lives in so many ways. These people have dedicated their time and effort and thus they have shaped and helped us become who we are. And therefore we thank the Lord for their presence in our lives and we also ask the Lord to bless them so that they may be able to have the fullness of life. We also thank the Lord for the gift of this day. Yet another day that we have been given to 
make good use of our talents, of our abilities and more importantly to make a difference not only in our lives but also in the lives of those around us. We also thank the Lord for the various opportunities that He has given us. Opportunities to put our talents, to put our abilities to use. And at the same time, opportunities to help others make a difference in their lives. Lord, we also want to thank you for all the experiences that you have given us. Some of these experiences may be really good. We may want to cherish these experiences. But there may be other experiences which may be bitter, which may be harsh. Nonetheless, these bitter experiences may have taught us a lot in life. These are the experiences that have made us stronger. And therefore, Lord, we thank you for giving us these experiences, for making us better individuals, for making us stronger, and thus for preparing us to face the challenges in life. And therefore, my dear friends, as we participate in this morning prayer, let us ask the Lord for this grace that we may be able to radiate His presence to the world around us, that we may be able to become messengers of peace, joy and love, spreading His message of goodness, spreading His message of peace and love to the world around us. And therefore, let us ask the Lord to accompany us in whatever we do today, so that every action Every word may radiate his love, peace and joy. And now, my dear friends, let us reflect and meditate on Psalm 58. As usual, we shall have a general overview of the psalm and then we shall take a look at the psalm in detail. Now, we see that Psalm 58 is a psalm of lament that is attributed to David. It is a powerful and impassioned plea for God's justice against wicked rulers and unjust judges. And therefore, we see that the psalm can be also divided into three main sections. The first section, which is basically a denunciation of wickedness and a call for God's judgment. And this we'll find in verses 1 to 5. Then the second part of the psalm is a depiction of the fate of the wicked, which we will find in verses 6 to 9. And finally, we also see a declaration of trust in God's justice and praise for his name. And this theme is found in verses 10 to 11. And therefore, we see that overall, when we look at the psalm, we can see that Psalm 58 is a passionate plea for God's justice against wicked rulers and unjust judges. Even in today's world, we do find ourselves in situations where we may either be victims of injustice or we may also see injustice happening around us. And therefore, this psalm could be quite a reminder for us of how to proceed. The psalm can also be a consoling psalm telling us that the Lord will take care if we place our faith and trust in Him. Now, we see that the psalm also condemns the deceitful practices of the wicked people and it also calls for God's swift judgment upon them. The psalm highlights the righteous indignation of the psalmist who places his trust in God's righteous judgment. And therefore, the psalm will also serve as a reminder of God's love. And therefore, we see that God is the ultimate judge. And we see that the psalm also affirms the faith that justice will prevail. Ultimately, we see that the psalm will lead us to praise and recognize God's faith and trust. And therefore, when we take a look at the psalm in detail, we see that in the first part of the psalm, the first section, David will denounce the wicked rulers and judges who fail to administer peace. And these 
are the wicked people who oppress the righteous. Here we see that he uses very strong language to describe their wickedness and deceit, calling them gods who speak lies and who weigh out injustice. And therefore we see that David also expresses his righteous indignation by imploring God to break the teeth of the wicked and to tear out their fangs like the fangs of a lion. And here we can see that it's very powerful language and which probably expresses the anger, the sorrow that David is experiencing, the grief that he is going through. And therefore David also accuses them of leading deaf, of being deaf to the voice of Chama. And therefore meaning that they are very unreceptive to the advice that is given to them. In other words, these are the people who are not willing to change. Now, in the second section, we see that David vividly portrays the fate of the wicked. And here he sees that he compares them to a serpent whose venom is useless and cannot harm others. And he envisions their demise, stating that they will be swept away like a stillborn child never to see the sun. Once again, very strong language which probably expresses the grief that David is undergoing. Also the fear, the anger that is there within. And here we see that David emphasizes that God will swiftly and decisively judge these wicked people. Therefore, by doing so, he also affirms that God's righteousness and justice will prevail. And then in the final section of the psalm, we see that David declares his trust in God's justice and David also praises the name of the Lord. He affirms that the righteousness of the Lord will rejoice when they see the vengeance of God. That means the righteous people will be happy when ultimately they realize that their faith, their trust in the Lord has been repaid. And therefore, when they look at the vengeance that the Lord takes on the wicked, they will know that justice has been served. And here we see that David expresses confidence that people will acknowledge and fear God. And thus, they will be able to recognize his authority and righteousness. And therefore, my dear friends, as we have reflected and meditated on this psalm, let us now close our eyes at this morning hour and let us thank the Lord. Let us praise the Lord. Let us glorify the Lord. Loving Father, you have given us this time in the morning. You have been gracious to us. You have given us your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has cleansed us from our sin. He has taken away all our sins and he has given us a new life. Lord, we thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit. And therefore, Lord, we ask you to bless us and protect us at every step of the way. Be our guiding force. Be there to always show us the way. And for all this, Lord, we thank you, we praise you and we glorify you. You have protected us and you have guarded us through the night. You have given us this time to spend with you. You have woken us up this morning and you have given us good health of mind and body. And for all this, Lord, for your love, for your mercy, for your generosity, we thank you and we praise you, Lord. You are a merciful God. You have blessed us in so many ways. As you reflect on our blessings, as you reflect on all the good things that have happened to us, as we reflect on our experiences, Lord, we want to thank you. We want to praise you for making us better individuals. And now, my dear friends, let us spend a few moments in silence and let us reflect on the psalm. Let us see what touched us. Could be a word, could be a phrase or could be a sentence or a thought. Remain with that.
and allow the psalm to take root in you so that ultimately your words, your actions will radiate the love, peace and joy of Christ to the world around. Prayer to Saint Michael the Archangel for protection. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of of the heavenly hosts by the power of God thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Act of Adoration O Sacrament Most Holy O Sacrament Divine all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Saint Gertrude Prayer for Souls in Purgatory Eternal Father, I offer thee the most precious blood of thy divine Son, Jesus, in union with the masses said throughout the world today for all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, those in my own home and within my family. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us, and may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God Rest in peace. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.